Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The island of Madagascar off the coast of southeastern Africa is one of the most biodiverse regions of the world, with very high levels of biological endemism, being home to a range of animals found nowhere else, including a wealth of chameleons, the insectivorous tenrex, and its most famous inhabitants, the lemurs. Due to Madagascar being composed of continental crust, unlike many smaller tropical islands, this landmass represents an old fragment of Gondwana that broke away from its neighbour India during the late Cretaceous roughly 88 million years ago. As such, many of Madagascar's endemic animal groups consist of African immigrants that were able to cross the Mozambique Channel at various points during the Cenozoic. The iconic lemurs were probably the first placental mammals to do so, with these primates estimated to have arrived between 52 and 40 million years ago. However, due to Madagascar's almost non-existent Cenozoic fossil record, as well as a lack of clear evidence from Africa, the evolutionary history of lemurs is very poorly understood. Like the lorises and bush babies, lemurs are strepsorine primates, which are united by a number of anatomical features not found in the more derived monkeys and apes. These include the possession of wet noses, relatively small brains, specialised tooth comb teeth used for grooming in modern forms, and comparatively large olfactory lobes. Other traits that separate modern lemurs from the dry-nosed anthropoid primates include minor sexual dimorphism, with females being generally socially dominant over males, and resulting in little direct male-on-male -male competition for mating rights, which is quite different from most monkeys and apes. Early strepsorines originated in the Northern Hemisphere, probably during the Paleocene, and had spread into Africa by the early Eocene circa 55 million years ago. Several genera of early strepsorines have been identified from North Africa, including Caranissia from the famous Egyptian Fayum fossil-bearing region, the tiny mouse lemur-like Jebe lemur from Tunisia, and the strange eye-eye-like Plesiopithecus. The lemurs and their sister lineage, the lorisoids, diverged in Africa as well, although their fossil remains are rare. Based on genetic studies, it has been suggested that the two groups split between 55 and 50 million years ago, before the ancestors of the lemurs made the sea voyage to Madagascar, probably by clinging to mats of floating vegetation. During the Eocene, ocean currents in this region were stronger than today, making it possible that small lemurs could have reached the island in about 30 days. From here, due to a lack of competition, these primates diversified explosively, moving into many of the same kinds of niches that would be later filled by monkeys and apes in Africa and Eurasia. However, much of this evolutionary history is lost to us, given the lack of Cenozoic fossil-bearing sites in Madagascar, with the oldest known lemur remains being datable to the late Pleistocene with these primates being a great example of a group with a long ghost lineage, stretching between their proposed origins in the early Eocene circa 50 million years ago and about 26,000 years ago. Indeed, the oldest known lemur remains aren't even true fossils, but sub-fossils, where the processes of mineralization have not yet been completed due to their relatively young age. These date from the late Pleistocene to the Holocene, and demonstrate that Malagasy lemurs were once far more diverse than they are today, with a number of intriguingly large forms far more massive than the Indri, the current modern record holder, at up to 9.5 kilograms or 21 pounds. A number of extinct groups are known from this time, with the most species rich being the so-called sloth lemurs of the family Paleopropithecidae, these were arboreal, herbivorous animals that moved through the trees in a slow, suspensory manner similar to living sloths, possessing elongated forelimbs, although being primates they lacked claws, and instead utilised long, curved digits to grip onto branches. Their closest living relatives are the Indriids, which are agile, arboreal animals capable of leaping great distances. Four genera are known, all of which seem to have fed on a mixture of leaves, fruit, seeds and nuts. The most basal and unspecialised member of the group was Mesopropithecus, which was native to the forests of northern, central and southern Madagascar. It was originally thought to be a close relative of modern Shifakas, due to possessing a similar skull, but postcranial evidence showed that it was a long-armed sloth lemur, albeit with comparatively shorter forelimbs than its more derived relatives. This would have made the animal less well adapted for suspensory behaviour, 
being still able to walk quadrupedally along the tops of branches if necessary. Three species are known, which varied in terms of size, diet, and bodily proportions. M. pithecoides was primarily a folivore, but also ate fruit and occasionally seeds. M. globiceps ate a mix of fruit and leaves, as well as larger quantity of seeds than M. pithecoides. M. dolichobrachion also consumed a mixed diet of fruits and leaves, but analysis of its teeth suggests that it was more of a seed specialist than the other two species. All of these range between 10 and 14 kilograms in weight, making them larger than all modern lemurs. Unlike their agile, indriid cousins, Mesopropithecus would have been a slow, deliberate climber, with body proportions more like that of a loris, suggesting that it lived in an unhurried lifestyle. It was also one of the youngest of the giant lemurs, with the most recent material being dated to between 570 and 679 CE, meaning that this genus died out about 1,400 years ago. Its demise is almost certainly due to human interference, as Austronesian peoples originating in modern-day Indonesia arrived via outrigger canoes about 2,000 years ago, and pressured many endemic Malagasy animals into extinction through hunting, habitat loss, and the introduction of invasive species. The more derived genus Babacotia was larger and possessed a more robust skull and teeth, indicating a more heavily folivorous diet. Weighing between 16 and 20 kilograms, or 35 and 44 pounds, it was also a slow, deliberate climber with a loris-like build, with its ankle and hip joints being highly flexible to support such a lifestyle. Its remains are quite rare and are restricted to the north and northwest of the island, possibly indicating that Babacotia was in some way specialised to this particular area. Not much radiocarbon dating has been applied to this animal's remains, but it is thought that this genus died out over a thousand years ago. Larger still was a genus Paleopropithecus, which was the most heavily adapted member of the group for suspensory locomotion in the trees. Weighing about 50 kilograms or 110 pounds, comparable to a modern chimpanzee, this animal was also prominently folivorous and may have consumed nuts and seeds on occasion. The forelimbs were highly elongated, being 20% longer than the hind limbs, while the digits were strongly curved, giving this lemur a strong grip, although it would have been very slow and awkward if forced down to the ground. Paleopropithecus was found across most of Madagascar, and was possibly the youngest of all the giant lemurs, potentially surviving into the 16th century, and might have given rise to local stories about a creature called the Tre Tre Tre, although this is disputed. The largest and most famous sloth lemur was Archaeoindris. Known from a single locality in the central highlands of Madagascar, this massive animal was one of the largest primates to ever live, with recent estimates placing the genus at around 160 kilograms or 350 pounds, comparable to a modern silverback gorilla. Although known from several complete skulls, the animal's postcranial remains are quite poorly understood. What has been found suggests that it would have been a slow but capable climber that fed mostly on leaves, while having to come down to the ground in order to travel. The small orbit suggests that Archaeoindris was primarily diurnal and was seemingly a rare animal, inhabiting the central highlands of Madagascar, which consisted of open woodlands and savannah, and was home to 20 additional lemur species at the time. Only about 20% of these have survived today while the rest, including Archaeoindris, died out during the Holocene after the arrival of humans. Exactly when it became extinct is not well known, although populations are thought to have died out not long after humans entered the Central Highlands, given that it was a slow-moving, slow-reproducing and specialised animal. This is very sad, as I'm sure Archaeoindris would have been a fascinating and impressive lemur when alive, being one of the largest primates to ever live comparable to gorillas and outweighed only by the massive Gigantopithecus. Another extinct family of lemurs were close relatives of the Paleopropithecids. These were the so-called monkey lemurs of the family Archaeolemuridae, which consisted of two genera. The first was the genus Hadropithecus, a short-faced terrestrial animal with large molar teeth adapted for crushing and chewing hard objects, as well as being able to handle grasses. This is unusual for a lemur, most of which were and are primarily arboreal, and this would have allowed Hadropithecus to avoid competition. It was a robust animal and not particularly agile, 
weighing up to 35 kilograms or 77 pounds. With its range encompassing the southern half of the island, it would have fallen prey to the extinct giant Fusa and the Malagasy crocodile Voe. The youngest known remains indicate that this genus died out roughly 1,400 years ago, being vulnerable to human hunting and competition from invasive species such as pigs. It was closely related to the more generalised Archaeolema, which was slightly smaller at 25 kilograms. This was also a terrestrial lemur, but was apparently more broadly omnivorous than Hadropithecus, with isotopic analysis revealing that the genus fed on leaves, fruit, nuts, and even small animals on occasion. It would have been the lemur equivalent of macaques, spending much of its time feeding on the ground, while still being able to climb into the trees when threatened. Its short, round face would have given Archaeolemur a somewhat human-like appearance with it being suggested that this animal could be the source behind Malagasy stories concerning the tre 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 as mentioned earlier. This genus died out at some point during the medieval period, being one of the younger extinct giant lemurs. Perhaps the strangest of Madagascar's extinct lemurs was the genus Megalodapis, a squat, bulky animal weighing about 50 kilograms or over 100 pounds on average. It possessed an array of features which were quite different from any modern lemur, it was proportioned much like a koala, with eyes that were positioned on the sides of its head, which is very unusual for a primate. The skull was massive, equipped with huge canines and powerful jaw muscles for chewing tough plant material. Indeed, the structure of the skull shows similarities to ungulates, with it being proposed that Megalodapis may have had a flexible upper lip like that of rhinos. Its brain was small for its body size, and it probably lived a slow-paced diurnal lifestyle browsing up in the trees, possessing feet that were very poorly adapted for walking on the ground. Despite its odd and highly distinctive appearance, phylogenetic studies have shown that Megalodapis was probably closely related to the family Lemuridae, which contains famous animals like the ring-tailed lemur and the ruffed lemurs. Like all other giant lemurs, Megalodapis was very vulnerable to habitat changes and human hunting, probably being among the first to die out. Other Pleistocene and Holocene extinct lemurs were not so unique, having close living relatives. For example, the genus Pachylemur was very similar to modern ruffed lemurs, but was almost three times larger and possessed a more robust build. It fed primarily on fruit and lived across most of Madagascar, probably functioning as an important seed disperser of fruits that are too large for modern lemurs. Before the arrival of humans, this up to 13 kilogram genus would have been preyed on by the giant Fusa and the extinct Malagasy crowned eagle, which were two of the island's apex predators. Pachylemur probably became extinct relatively recently, with the youngest known remains being roughly 500 years old. Another notable extinct lemur was the giant Aiai, which would have resembled a scaled-up version of the unusual modern Aiai, a nocturnal, wood-boring animal with chisel-like teeth and elongated digits for probing into bark in search of grubs. Due to its strange appearance, the Aiai is considered a taboo animal in Madagascar and were traditionally heavily feared as being omens of evil. They are thought to be the most basal of all lemurs, despite their heavily derived appearance. The extinct giant Aiai was very similar to the modern form, but was at least twice the size and lived in southeastern Madagascar, a region where living Aiais are not found. It probably died out within the last thousand years, due to the clearing of its habitat for farmland as well as hunting by humans. Unfortunately, many modern lemurs may soon find themselves in the same position as Megalodapis, Archaeoindris and the rest, as many species are considered endangered due to the effects of an expanding human population, a changing climate and hunting for bushmeat. Madagascar is a relatively poor country and is currently experiencing an extended famine due to a warming and drying climate, which places great pressure on both people and wildlife. We can only hope that solutions can be made to remedy these changes, for the good of both Malagasy people and the endemic animals that call the island home. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the early evolution of ostriches, so until then I'll see you again soon. Cheerio!